it's December. It's a very special month in December. I'd like to tell you it's going to be an easy month, but December is not necessarily an easy month. And this December of 2016 is probably going to be even a little bit more difficult than we've experienced in other Decembers. We're in a world energy that is tumultuous, that is full of a lot of fear, and we get the opportunity to stay out of fear and in as much love as we can muster. I thought it might help this month if I tell you a little bit more about the mythologies of December because December's full of, of mythology. In fact, December is the month of death and rebirth. And we have that in, in many of the ancient, um, the ancient mythologies and even in the modern day mythology. So let me just give you a few examples if I, if I might. And if, if, while you're listening to this, if you think about, okay, I'm going to get through December because it is a month of death and rebirth. And when we have such a powerful time of death and rebirth, that is the time for old patterns to shed, to, to let go, to get out of here, and new patterns to come in. And we're seeing that, again, all over the world. But the problem is when we see the old patterns go, they never want to go, so they hang on. And, th and then we see this, this big tug of war. So we're going to experience more of that tug of war in our world. But in our personal lives, let's try not to do that. Let's try to just let go of those old patterns that no longer work in our lives and shed them and allow the new in. Let me give you some examples of some of those gods and goddesses that just might be able to help with that. We have in, in the Celts, the December was the time that the sun god would travel to the underworld. And when he traveled to the underworld, he would bring back the sunshine along with bringing back the mysteries of life. And so we learned about the mysteries of life through the sun god who traveled to the underworld. But he also brought back all of those beings who are going to be reborn in the new year. So they would just kind of wait there in limbo till it was their time to be reborn. So if, if the sun god came to the underworld and chose you to come to be reborn, you would have a birthday before the year was out. I love that old story because it always, again, gives us hope that no matter what's going on in life, there is a new birth coming. In, in the Greeks, and this is a fun story, the Greek god Dionysus. Well, Dionysus was the god of the Greek grape harvest. And Dionysus, on December 21st, the women of the grape village, or the village where the grapes were grown, the women of the village would get together and they would partake of a little too much of the fermented grape, shall we say. And that one of the men from the village would be chosen to play Dionysus. Well, and then the women would pretty much stomp him to death. They would send him off to his doom. And of course, they've had a little too much of the fermented grape and they're stomping him the way they stomp the grape. Well, that doesn't mean it was the end of him because Dionysus on December 25th, a baby would be born and that would be the new Dionysus. Again, that theme of death and rebirth. The Romans, oh goodness, December 21st was, was quite a holiday for them. They, there were many, many gods that they celebrated on the 25th. Apollo for one, Hermes for one, and, and many others. So again, that 25th, that December 25th, very sacred for the ancient gods. The Egyptians, I love this story. This is a love story. It's the story of Osiris and Isis. The goddess Isis loved Osiris, and Osiris loved Isis, and they had a very happy and successful life together. Well, Osiris's brother, Seth, was jealous of this great life they had and this love they had. And so he murdered his brother and he chopped his body up and threw it to the fire, the far 
edges and reaches of, of the world. Well, Isis loved her husband. And so she went from place to place to place and captured all of her husband. And as she captured him, a son was conceived, the child Horus. Osiris became the underworld, the god of the underworld. And guess who Horus, the god, became? The god of rebirth. So again, we have that death and rebirth. In the Jewish tradition, in the second century, the temple was recaptured. And in recapturing the temple, there was only enough oil for burning one day. But a miracle happened. The oil in the lamp burned for eight days. That miracle is still celebrated today, as for eight days, the people of the, the Jewish people will light a candle on the, on the light a Hanukkah candle for eight days in a row, celebrating the miracle of the second temple. You know, probably the, the best known 25th, the, the date for the 25th is Christmas. And the, the Christian religion, in, in the Christian religion, that is probably the most holiest day of the year. The baby Jesus was said to be born on December 25th. And whether he was or not, and, and that does, historians and, and biblical scholars will tell you, probably not, but it doesn't matter. Because for 2,000 years, that date has been celebrated as the day that the, the baby Jesus was born and brought into this world to celebrate love, to celebrate hope, to celebrate peace for all. Ah, oh, we haven't quite lived up to that, have we? That's why it is so important for each of us, each of us, each, you, me, all of us, that as we come to the end of this year, and as our modern day world continues to celebrate life, death, and rebirth, that we keep in mind it's time to let go of our old patterns that no longer work in our lives. And it's time to move into the new world of peace and love, of hope for a better world for our children. You know, that's not easy, I know. We're in very difficult energy and that's only going to escalate. So it's so important this year and this month that each of you carve out a way to remain in as much love as you possibly can. And when the world gets to you, move to your sanctuary, your place of, of prayer, your place of meditation, your place of getting away, whether it's in, in nature, which is a great place for it to be, a meditation table or room in your home, it's going to be even more important that you're able to stay in a place of love as much as possible. And every time we leave that place of love, allow the rebirth of more love to take place. This is Diana Rankin, a psychic medium, a teacher, a spiritual guide. My master's degree is in how the sacred is expressed across cultures and throughout history. I love our ancient stories. If you have one you think I would like to talk about, please drop me an email. You can reach me through the comments below, or you can reach me through my email, through my websites, and those are, are right below too. I have two websites. Thank you for being with me today. May your life be blessed this month. May you rise above the turmoil and allow your own life to, re be, to be rebirthed into greater prosperity, greater happiness, greater peace, and greater love.